It's March and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, news, gardens, and one book, one community. the March edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Now March traditionally brings Read Across America to the library as we say happy birthday to Dr. Seuss. Our children's rooms will be going all out with green eggs and ham, Horton Hears a Who and Red Fish Blue Fish and you can too. The big focus for March is on One Book One Community. Our spring 2022 selection is A Chafalaya Houseboat, My Years in the Louisiana Swamp by Gwen Rowland. The goal of One Book, One Community is to encourage and inspire meaningful conversation around the shared experience of reading a great book. This year's selection allows us to also focus on and celebrate Louisiana's natural resources. The kickoff party takes place on Saturday, March 5th at the Main Library at Goodwood. This family-friendly event features live Zydeco music from RJ and Creole Smooth, delicious jambalaya provided by the Cortanas Kiwanis, entertainment for the kids, and a host of friends and organizations whose work focuses on landscape, nature, and Louisiana's cultural heritage. Later this month, Danny Heitman will speak on his book, Summer of Birds, and Mary Beth Lima will share her own adventures of a Louisiana birder. Robert Dobbs from Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries will present Louisiana Brown Pelicans, Past, Present, and Future. We'll screen the documentary and hold book discussions too. All of the events for adults as well as children are listed on the special One Book, One Community website, readonebook.org. The online business forum on March 9th will feature Steve Beauchamp, CEO of Paylocity, who will speak on how to create a thriving workplace. Our Get Organized series returns with professional organizer Alyssa Trosclair of Emend. We're presenting Saturday Science, the Grown Up Gaming League, movies, and more. Plus, save the date for at Grandma's house on April 2nd at the Pride Cheneyville Branch Library. It's all in this month's issue of The Source, in print and online at ebrpl.com. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. In these fast-paced and globally inspired times, it's more important than ever to have easy access to news that represents a broad range of viewpoints from all over the world. For decades, the library served as a provider of local, national, and even international news. And while we still get your favorite newspapers in print, We've added online versions to the digital library as well. It's time to find out more in the digital download. Enjoy free access to the New York Times online with your library card. Experience unrivaled content from stories and the world's best journalists. Access the daily newspaper, the latest news, reviews, opinions and blogs. The online version of the New York Times is updated throughout the day as news breaks and stories evolve. You can also get access to the New York Times book review, magazine, recipes, and reporting enhanced with video content. To get started, visit our New York Times page in the digital library. Create a free New York Times account and redeem a 24-hour pass to access it from home or anywhere. When your pass runs out, just head back to the page and get a new one. Also enjoy unlimited access from any library location. For more online newspaper options, you can also try Press Reader and Newsbank. Find them all in the digital library at ebrpl.com. Thanks, Andrew. I'm delighted to say that we've recently added the Wall Street Journal to our online collection. 
that already included Press Reader, which offers newspapers from around the world. Then throw in NewsBank and EBSCO's newspaper and magazine indexes. Add that to the huge digital files containing the historical archives for our local newspaper, The Advocate, as well as the archive for the Times-Picayune. We've even digitized Grigri. It's sure to please the news junkie in your life. Let's shift gears and check in with Jessica McDaniel reporting in from Beyond the Stacks. Gardening gives us opportunities to connect with nature in our own backyards. We're here at the main library at Goodwood to connect with our backyard. Let's check it out. Garden Discoveries is a three-year-old program. It's a coordination and collaboration between the library and the Baton Rouge Botanic Garden Foundation. And it's to bring educational opportunities to the public through this venue. Uh, basically, every second Saturday we have a program and they've cover the whole spectrum of gardening and gardens and landscape architecture and just about anything you can think of. What are a few topics that the, that the series explores? Well, today, for instance, we're exploring um, sustainable living, sustainable gardening. We have explored uh, beginning with herbs. We have explored landscape architecture and design. And we've explored Camellias. We had a whole program on camellias that was absolutely fascinating because I didn't know there were that many camellias. <laughs> uh, so we go into just about anything that has to do with green stuff on the outside, we talk about it. What's something interesting about these Independence Park gardens that you'd like people to know? The diversity of these gardens. Uh, by using volunteers who are primarily experts in their particular fields, it affords an opportunity to have a very diverse garden with a lot of different plant material and is probably the only place in the area where you can go to see this much material and this much landscape architecture in one place. Do you need any gardening experience to attend one of these programs? Absolutely not. In fact, the programs are set up to appeal to the public at large, and they're for the public. They're to help educate people and to make them aware not only of some of the nuances of gardening, but also to make them aware of this wonderful botanic garden that sits right here in the middle of Baton Rouge. Find more programs on gardening in the Source newsletter every month or in the events calendar at ebrpl.com. Thanks, Jessica. We've really enjoyed our partnership with the Botanical Garden Foundation. And there are fellow gardening enthusiasts from Baton Rouge Green, Hilltop Arboretum, the Royal Life Museum, the Master Naturalists of Greater Baton Rouge, the Cooperative Extension Service, and of course, the Master Gardeners also offer services and programs to support and encourage gardeners throughout the year. Check out this month's issue of The Source to see all that they have in store. Quite a few programs even complement our One Book, One Community's focus on natural conservation. And let's not forget all the print and digital resources the library can provide to new and experienced gardeners. Stay right there. After the break, Pabby Arnold joins me for a chat right here on the Library Road Show. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that free entertainment is good for us all. That's why we make ebooks and audiobooks available for free through the Libby app, grant free access to unlimited streaming music and video through Freegal, Canopy, and IndieFlix. Get a library card. Get free entertainment at ebrpl.com slash digital library. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. 
Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. You're watching the March edition of the Library Roadshow, everything you need to know about your local library system. Now, Pabby Arnold is no stranger to the Library Roadshow. From her time as master storyteller and coordinator for children's services to her new role in special literacy projects. I'd like Pabby to give us a refresh on our very first special literacy project geared towards our youngest patrons, 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten. Pabby started this program in 2015, and since its inception, quite a few families have graduated from the program. So first off, Pabby, why do we need to read to and with young children? Because they need to have heard at least a thousand books by the time they start school in order to just be on par. All children need that 1,000 books to be because on Because of par. the vocabulary. The vocabulary on with it. They hear words that they would not come up in normal conversation, but they need to know those words when they get to school. Plus, they sit still for like more than a minute. And they <laughs> also learn things that you don't realize they are learning that they'll use later in elementary school. They get geography when you have books from different countries. Mm -hmm. You have history when you get books that have historical things. But you know, they also learn how to hold books and look from left to right. Exactly. Left to right top to bottom, the page is going. That's like when um, a hymn book and you see the child doing this even though they're not on the right line. Mm -hmm. But they're learning. That's right. They're learning and it's okay to read that same book a jillion different times. That's one thing we do tell the parents and the grandparents and the caregivers. You may be tired of Goodnight Moon, but they are not. Oh, as I tell parents, if they start complaining about it, next time you hear a song you like, you may hear it once and then turn the thing off and you may never hear it again. Yeah, and then they it's realize. the same thing. That's yes, we, right. What we like, we want to hear over and over again. Um, now, 1,000 books sounds like an awful lot of books. How hard is it really? to read 1,000 books One before book kindergarten. One book a night. One book a night for three years is more than 1,000 books. That's not even 15 minutes. Three books a night for one year is more than 1,000 books. And we let you with uh, this program. Oh, we have this where you write down the books that the kids read. There's, for every 250 books, there's one of these things. And if you're reading the same book over and over again because a child likes it, just put the little bit marks over yeah, and over again. we let you count it twice. That's right. All right, so, so yes. what are the rewards and incentives the library is offering along the way to encourage this habit in the home? Okay, we have a number of things for them. Every 250, well, when they start, they get a bag, a book bag. Okay. That to bring their books back and forth from the library. All right. Then after that, for every 250 books, they'll get a new different color log um, they'll get a, a sticker a sticker that tells how many books they've we been do reading. Love there stickers. we go. Yes, yes, we love stickers. <laughs> yes, and they may get a uh, a neck a chain necklace that says mm -hmm. "I read a thousand books." It's a medal. A me oh. Yes, uh -huh. um, they can. It will get a decal that they can you put on things for the child. There's a number of different things, and when they finish, they get a copy of Will Helen Brand's book. Off we go, and this. Artwork that's done on here. We've seen this bear by Will before. Killen Brand. That's right. And we're using this book in March in our story walk next to the library, the main library. And Will. And Will will be here. We have our annual celebration where the kids who have finished a thousand books. They get to come, and he talks to them. We have refreshments with them. And that's they when get they them. get their copy. And, and, no, they already have their copy when they finish the thing, but they okay. get it signed. Oh, that's right. He will sign it for them. And that's really special to have exactly. the author and artist sign the book to you. That's right. Your name is in it, and he usually puts a little drawing in it, which mm -hmm. is nice, too. But we also, he's going to be here a day early on Saturday, and he's going to be at Baker in the morning at 11. And because we have a story walk at Baker. Baker and at our Carver branch where we have another one, which is, um, I think it's uh, um, two o'clock. Pabby, I love this. This is so foundational. You keep up the good work. We found that a little effort at home reaps big rewards by the time the kiddos hop on that big yellow bus for their first day in kindergarten. After the break, author Gwen Rowland, plus book reviews from one of our younger library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that staying informed is good for us all. That's why we 
provide free access to the New York Times and other national newspapers online. Permit free access to niche magazines and articles through Press Reader. Get a library card. Get informed at ebrpl.com newspapers. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew. Welcome back to the March edition of the Library Roadshow. Our One Book, One Community series is built around the book, A Chafalaya Houseboat. In this memoir, Gwen Rowland recounts how she and her partner converted an old dwelling into a houseboat and lived for eight years in the Atchafalaya Swamp. Gwen joins us now by phone. All right, Gwen, who are you really and what are you best known for? I'm Gwen Rowland, and I guess I'm best known as someone who likes old-timey things and gets a kick out of sharing what I know. I like living close to nature and doing things by hand. What I like best of all is when someone tells me they went home and planted something or cooked something from scratch because of me. What inspired you to write this memoir, A Chafalaya Houseboat? Well, when Calvin Vozan and I were living in the swamp, I wrote my first article for the Pac Plaquemine newspaper in order to answer people's questions about what it was like to be the subject of a National Geographic article. That was an article featuring C.C. Lockwood's photographs in 1979, I think. That was my first experience with publishing, and it was so satisfying that I started writing stories for newspapers and magazines, mostly how-to articles to help other back-to-earth type people. And it wasn't long before editors started offering me assignments about other interesting lifestyles, and it just went from there. How does your writing and your daily life connect today? Well, writing provided both the inspiration and the knowledge for the life that I live. In 2010, when I retired from writing about sustainable agriculture, I finally had time to try all the things I'd been interviewing farmers and researchers about. And, uh, you know, I garden with manures, compost, earthworms, crop rotation, you name it. I've kept bees and goats. I've raised broiler chickens for my freezer. And uh, just this year, I took up grinding wheat and corn to make my breads. And I've learned to ferment kefir in apple juice. I guess you could say I've set back civilization a few hundred years. But for me, it's the best life. How can folks learn more about you? At 73, I'm retired and no longer have a professional online presence. However, I do have a personal Facebook account as Gwen Carpenter Rowland, where I post pictures of things we do around here on the homestead. I use the public settings so anyone can view them. And also anyone can send me a personal message through Facebook as well. Thanks, Gwen. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person next month. Gwen will be visiting Baton Rouge at the end of April, when she'll be our guest for two presentations at the Main Library on Goodwood. On Saturday, April 23rd, Gwen will discuss her time on the Atchafalaya Houseboat, as well as the creation of the book and the resultant documentary. Then on Sunday, April 24th, Gwen will share the art of storytelling with Pass It On, Skills and Stories. All part of One Book, One Community. Check out readonebook.org for a complete listing of events, more background information on Gwen and her book, as well as information on Louisiana landscapes, art, and birds. It's now time to check in with one of our younger patrons to find out what they've been reading at the library. Hello, my name is Luke and I am 10 years old. My favorite book is The Thing About Jellyfish by Allie Benjamin. You were dead for two whole days before I even knew. It was afternoon, late August, the end of the long, lonely summer after sixth grade. My mom called me in from outside and I knew something was wrong. Really, really wrong. Both my parents bring me to the library. 
When I come to the library, I like to talk to the librarians about new books and books that they would recommend for me. Thanks, Luke. I like how we even included a slightly watery topic. It goes with our One Book, One Community focus. Stay right there. You're watching the March edition of the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library System believes that knowing where you come from is good for us all. That's why we grant free access to genealogy resources available through Ancestry.com. Make the vast historic resources of Heritage Quest available to you online. Get a library card. Get your family tree at ebrpl.com slash genealogy. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. You're watching the March edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. 2022 saw the return of Mardi Gras here in South Louisiana. To celebrate the occasion, we hosted the Louisiana State Archive for a presentation on their Mardi Gras exhibit, Masquerade, the Traditions of New Orleans Mardi Gras. Would you please give her a warm welcome? We brought a few of our artifacts from um, the exhibit, but this is only a very small portion of the over 150 years and more of Mardi Gras that we are exhibiting right here in Baton Rouge. You don't have to go to New Orleans, although I hear that there's some really great exhibits in New Orleans this year as well. The exhibit was really shaped by two lenders in particular, at least the aesthetic and the direction. Uh, those two would be the Kern family at Blaine Kern's Mardi Gras world and also carnival historian Arthur Hardy, who was a major contributor to this show with his personal memorabilia and collection of artifacts. This is the original act book from 1872, which is a part of our collection at the State Archives. Very proud to bring this to you to let you know that on April 3rd, 1872, Monte Crawl was declared by the state legislature as a legal holiday in the state of Louisiana. What it allowed was for costumes. It allowed for the temporary suspending of laws that said that you couldn't conceal your identity with a mask. Let me point you in the direction of a photograph from 1958. It is the queen of Zulu, Wilhelmina Garnett, and her maids. It was a never before seen photo that we uncovered here in a 35 millimeter slide collection by donor Joseph Reed. It tells a lot of things. It tells a story. Um, so the Zulu queens were not represented by women until 1933. Prior to that, uh, Zulu men masked as queens. And as you may imagine, that lent a rather comical effect uh, to the queen. However, um, when ladies and young ladies came along, uh, the elegance and beauty that they brought was just unmatched. And you really see that in this photograph. So our exhibit is open now through April 14th. We're open Monday through Friday until 4 o'clock and the first Saturday of April and March. Uh, visitors can experience New Orleans customs, both historic and contemporary, uh, from a variety of cultures. Masquerade Traditions of New Orleans Mardi Gras um, is a perfect example of the mission of the archives here um, in offering preservation and access to the citizens of Louisiana. We feel that we've encapsulated some amazing treasures from the New Orleans community, and we hope that all will come to our free space and experience it for themselves. To bridge today's stories on the joie de vie of Mardi Gras in the streets, and our next segment, where we cover the vinyl underground at one of our branches, I'd like to throw you something, mister. Music and entertainment galore at the library. 
through downloadable music in Freegal, streaming concerts in Quello, and music CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays, and even binge boxes at the library, ready to be checked out. So check it out. Music brings us together so much so that even how we listen to it plays a role. We're here at the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch Library where vinyl rules. Let's check it out. I'm Jordan Courtney. I'm the Librarian 2, Head of Reference at the Blue Bonnet Library. Today we are having the Vinyl Underground meeting. This is where uh, music collectors, vinyl collectors, music enthusiasts get together. We'll listen to some vinyl. We'll talk about uh, different aspects of vinyl. And usually there's some swapping, uh, changing of vinyl going on uh, at the end of the meeting. But yeah, this what we're listening to right now is Hum. I don't know if y'all are familiar with this artist. Uh, they're Hum, H-U-M. They, uh, they started in the 90s, you know, alternative rock band, and this is uh, an album they just put out. So what can a patron expect when they come to this meeting or this program? Usually it's very informal. It's a casual meeting of just people who want to get together and talk about music, talk about, you know, what they've been recently collecting, um, different things they're anticipating, different uh, kind of shout out about different events that uh, we're either doing outside of this meeting with the library or other vinyl related stuff going on. What's the difference between a vinyl collector and a vinyl hoarder? Um, there is no difference. <laughs> it's not hoarding if it's vinyl. That's like a, a good catchphrase you might hear in the community. Looking to discover new and old music? Explore free online databases like Freegal and Polo Concerts in the digital library. Or check out the library's music collection in the catalog at ebrpl.com. This club of vinyl enthusiasts at the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch Library has attracted like-minded collectors from across the city. Last year, the club hosted Record Swap Day, where vinyl retailers rubbed shoulders with vinyl collectors for six full hours. Plans are in the work for a second annual Record Swap Day. Keep your eyes on the Source newsletter and the online calendar at ebrpl.com to find out when that will take place. Would you like to connect with like-minded neighbors over a hobby, craft, or project that matters to you? Visit your local branch library and let us know. We'd love to host your club. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com ebrpl. I'd really like to hear some bird calls as a spinoff for One Book, One Community. You heard me, bird calls. Round up the kids and start whistling, warbling, and even screeching. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We are not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow in April? Well, more with One Book, One Community, of course. Tune in next month, and we'll share another free resource available in the digital library. Next month you'll learn about another service offered at your local branch library. Thanks for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. <laughs>